Now today I'm actually outside the St Mary's Parish Church in Wyke, Bradford. And two minutes down the road we had a brutal murder of a young girl in May 1981. Now to give you a bit of a timeline, 2nd of January 1981, the Yorkshire Ripper was finally caught. It was supposed to be a new dawn, a new beginning for Bradford, but several months down the road in May 1981, we had the Jimmy Adams uh, murder, a brutal stabbing on Carlisle Road in Bradford, still unsolved. We did a, a quite in-depth blog on that, so you can check that one out on our channel. But today we are going to talk about this young girl who was actually murdered several days after the Jimmy Adams murder. So a bit of a bad year that was. Shortly I'm just going to meet Mark down the road who will be waiting for me at the scene of the crime. The story I'm about to tell um, has its origins here on St Mary's Mount in Wyke. It was 1981, Sunday the 31st of May to be more precise, and a family lived here at that time called the Hamiltons. There was Fred and Rita, they were the parents of three children, Anthony, Andrew and five-year-old Anne-Marie. On that Sunday afternoon, Anne-Marie had spent time making buns with her mum in the kitchen and then she came out to play with friends and they played on the, on the land which is behind me. Later on in the afternoon, the weather got a little bit more dismal. There was torrential rain and there was thunder and lightning. And then at 7 p.m., that was the last time anybody saw Anne-Marie. The only detail that we do know is that Anne-Marie and her friends went across to number three, which is just behind us there. That's the house that's got scaffolding on at the moment. Um, there was a fella that lived there and they wanted to know if his stepson wanted to come out and play. And that was basically the last that anyone ever saw of her. Indeed, it's this house here, number three, St Mary's Mount, that would become eventually the focus of this missing child story. Behind me is Shirley Manor First School, and this was the school that Anne-Marie attended. She was nearing the end of her second year at the time of her disappearance, and the headmaster said that the school was shocked and stunned by what had happened. Nowadays, this area is occupied by an Asda supermarket, but back in 1981, it was the former site of the Wyke Sports and Social Club. And that club became the focal point for the police investigation. It was like the, the nerve centre for the inquiries into what happened to a missing child. Leading the investigation was Detective Inspector Michael Saunders of Odsall CID. Speaking to the Telegraph and Argus, he said, there was a very good response from the public immediately once it was known this little girl was missing. Some 400 civilians volunteered to come out and help during the night. They cooperated with police officers in searching wooded areas and open land. The search was extended through council estates in Wyke as well. I would also like to appeal to everyone in the Wyke area to search their own property. It may well be that this little girl has become lost and has gained access to some building or vehicle and could be trapped in there. We are very concerned for her safety in view of her tender years. The sooner we find her, the better. The TNA published a couple of pictures of Rita, Amory's mother, looking absolutely distraught and distressed. And her father, Fred, the paper described him as having a tear-stained face. He spoke of how his little girl was terrified of thunder and lightning. She'd have been scared out of her wits, been out the whole night on her own. They just wanted the little girl back. In the days that followed the disappearance, Hundreds of local people helped the police with the search. There was about 90 police officers also involved, so it was quite a huge operation. And then on day four, which will have been the Wednesday, Wednesday the 3rd of June, a discovery was made in this area, which is now the Lowmore Industrial Estate. A new road was being laid at that time, 
and one of the workmen who was about to cover it with concrete discovered that the foundations of the road had been tampered with. Some of the stones didn't look right, they'd been unsettled. And he did a little bit of an excavation and that's where he found the remains of Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie's body was found only three inches or so below the surface of the hardcore road foundation. She was partially clothed and there was bruises to her face, head, arms and neck. The discovery made it to the Telegraph and Argus front page and they described it as a million to one chance. Detective Superintendent Stainthorpe said, if we'd searched this area, the odds are that we would not have found the body. It is such an isolated spot that the likelihood is that the person responsible for burying the body had a good deal of local knowledge. The Telegraph and Argus reporter went on to say that the road could have covered the girl's body for years and hidden the appalling truth of her tragic disappearance from her family. So following the discovery of Anne-Marie's body, it was taken away, but this area became a hive of activity throughout the rest of that Wednesday. And later on in the afternoon, just behind me, you can make out the embankment that's overlooking the current Lowmore station. There was a gentleman sat on that embankment looking over here and by all intents and purposes he looked distressed to the point of being suspicious and one of the policemen that actually worked at Lowmore station approached him and asked him if everything was okay. The man brought down and actually confessed to the murder of Anne-Marie Hamilton and that man was Anthony Pattinson the father of the stepson across the road. Anthony Pattinson had actually struck when Anne-Marie and her friends called at his house to ask if his stepson could come to play out. When the other children had left, that's when Pattinson took the girl. He took her up to his bedroom and he attempted to rape her. Pattinson told the police in a statement the following. I held her tightly to me and she was making noises. I knew I had gone too far. I didn't know what to do. I was in a panic. I knew I would have to kill her. I put a belt around her neck, then I pulled it tight with my hands. Then I knelt over her and pushed her head forward. I do not know how long I stayed like that. I stayed till she was quiet, and then I knew she was dead. I saw a shopping bag on the stairs and I got it, and I put her into it. Then I took her downstairs. Following his confession, Anthony Pattinson was arrested and he was charged with murder. So the day had started off with a murder hunt and within a few hours the police had got their man. So why did Pattinson choose this rather remote part of Lowmore, formerly known as New Biggin, as the ideal place to dump a body? Well, he'd driven here in his car with little Anne-Marie, still in that bag, and his explanation to the police was as cowardly as it was callous. He said, I took her out of the bag and put her in a dip in the road. I just wanted her covering up so I could not see her and no one would find her. So we're here at St Mary's Parish Church in Wyke and Anne-Marie's tiny body was carried towards these doors. It was reported that there was hundreds of local people here to attend the funeral. And there was actually so many people that they all couldn't be accommodated inside the church. So they had loudspeakers out here so people were unable to get inside. They could still hear what was being said. Overseeing the funeral service was Reverend Roger Dowson and he said that Anne-Marie's death had been a terrible act, but nevertheless, the people of Wyke must not think of revenge. He said, any vengeance must be done by God. It is in his hands, not ours. We must remember the tremendous way all types of people in the village gathered together to search for Anne-Marie when she was missing. The child is now safe with Jesus. What we try to do at the end of these videos is to take the viewer to a grave. 
but on this occasion we're not able to do that because following the service here little Anne Marie's body was taken to Parkwood crematorium in Elland where she was cremated several months later in November 1981 at Leeds Crown Court there was a murder trial and Anthony Pattinson was found guilty of murder and he was sentenced to life imprisonment. As always, let's remember Anne-Marie and let's also remember the family, keep them in our thoughts because what they had to face was absolutely unbearable. Every parent's worst nightmare. But I think as well, we should also give the people of Wyke our thoughts as well because it was them people that came together they helped the police with the search in their hundreds they opened their homes for searches nothing was off limits and it was actually the people of Wyke that clubbed together to pay for little Anne Marie's funeral and I think that embodies good old Bradford spirit really the community spirit that hopefully is still out there but Anne-Marie, rest in peace.